Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over three birdhouses and all the birdhouses are exactly the same, but I'm going to give them three different styles. One will be a farmhouse style and that's the one I'm going to start with. And one will be shabby chic and one French country. I wanted to do a primitive birdhouse, but I can't really do this birdhouse in a prim primitive style. So I'll save that for a later video. So uh, this first one, I like the green roof, uh, but I wanted to change it up a little bit. So I'm gonna use this transfer from um, the set Sunflower uh, and that's a Dixie Bell set, and I'm picking some of those, and I'm going to put those on the white. So I think sunflowers are very farmhouse style. Uh, they work well with garden decor, obviously, and uh, I think that they uh, work well with fall decor. And one of the reasons that I'm getting some of these birdhouses finished is because uh, I want to use them in some of my fall vignettes and this time of year is one of the times that the birdhouses really sell well for me and then uh, even after fall into the Christmas season they'll sell so I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of them done. Uh, now these little birdhouses uh, when they're in, I get them from uh, Ryan and Son, and that's a wholesale company. You do have to have a business license to buy there, but, uh, but I get good prices in these. And, um, and so I had some of these on hand, and I just thought it would make a good video to take the same birdhouse and turn it into three different styles. Now this roof would work well to stay green, but I wanted to change it up because I've had these in the store uh, at different times in this color. So uh, I just felt like it was time to kind of change most of them up. So um, I'm not gonna leave the roof green. I'm gonna paint it in the color caviar. Now this birdhouse is already sold. Um, I had I had it about half finished and someone was in the store and wanted to buy it. So uh, I told them when I finished it that I would hold it back for them. So uh, she, the lady that bought it, likes a lot of farmhouse decor. So this is going to work well for her. I've also got a couple of birdhouses from my friend Debbie. That I need to make over so uh, I'll do those in a video soon also but my original plan was to take uh, to do four different styles of birdhouses and that was before I decided to use sp this particular style for three of them but my original plan was to do the four birdhouses in those four styles and then uh, and then after I finished that video the next video would be maybe uh, a farmhouse vignette with that birdhouse and then uh, each following video uh, one of the other styles of birdhouses with a vignette and I still may do that but my next video is going to have to be the primitive birdhouse so probably what I'll end up doing is do a primitive birdhouse and just go ahead and do it with the primitive vignette if that makes sense then i decided to make this even more farmhouse i wanted to add some stenciling to it so um, i have a stencil that has the words farm life on it uh, along with some other things uh, but i'm just going to use the words on this and they won't fit the way they're laid out on the stencil, so I'll just have to kind of make it work by adding the second word at the bottom. And then I had another stencil that had the word sunflowers on it, so I'm going to stencil that somewhere else on the birdhouse. 
Now this is a metal bird house and, and I do sell them well, but I hear that a lot of birds don't like metal bird houses. So uh, I think that the reason is probably, a viewer said probably because uh, they get hot uh, or they can get hot in the sun. So I just will recommend that this be a shade birdhouse, which is fine because it hangs so it could hang uh, from a tree and then it would be shaded so I don't want to overdo this so instead of doing another whole sunflower I'm just kind of placing a partial sunflower and then uh, and then a leaf or two and just kind of make sure that every area has some something uh, to give it some interest and now I'm painting the roof, and it is, uh, again, the Kohler Caviar. And um, I think I mentioned that I do two coats, but I'm pretty sure I just do one coat on this because I was okay with bits of that green showing through uh, because of the green in the leaves. But I think this black gives it more of a farmhouse look. And then once the roof was dry, then I added um, a little perch. And the perch that I'm adding to this one is uh, going to be just a drawer pull that I had uh, in black. And so I'm just going to drill a couple of holes and, uh, and add that drawer pull. And I've already drilled the holes here and I'm adding the screw. And then, uh, because I didn't have screws in black, uh, short screws in black, then uh, I'm just going to uh, take some of that paint and uh, paint the screw heads so that they'll blend. And then once all this was done, then uh, I gave this a couple of coats of a clear uh, sealer and so that it would be ready for outside and those transfers would also be sealed in. I'm also going to be adding hang tag to all of these and I'm going to make a pretty simple one to go with this one. So I'm just going to layer some um, scrapbook paper over the top of this. This is some of that paper that you get in a paper pack from uh, the Dollar Tree and it's a real fibrous some of it is very fibrous this is one of them and I love the way they tear and look so um, I'm just going to glue this on and on the black and then put this partial sunflower on it and then stamp a B on it and I usually like to antique around the edges of the layers uh, with my uh, Tim Holtz Antique Oxide Ink, and that's an in ink blending tool that I use to, um, to antique around the edges, and I'll, I'll add those in the description. But I just put that little partial transfer on there, and it, for some reason, it doesn't transfer very well on this paper. Uh, it actually transfers really well on paper generally, but on this paper, I did have a little more difficulty. And once I finally got this transferred on, then I just trimmed it and put a, um, a punched a hole in it and uh, tied some, um, some jute twine in it and stamped a little B on it. This type of paper also didn't want uh, to, um, my hole punch didn't want to work with it. But again, I kept this one very simple and I just wanted it to go with my birdhouse. So I just tied that on and this one was complete. And I just love how this one turned out. And again, it's already sold. Now the next one that I'm gonna make over is gonna be uh, one that I'll be doing in French country style. 
And what I did was uh, I painted it in two coats of um, a white Rust-Oleum paint. Uh, that way I didn't have to seal it afterwards. And, um, and then I went back and added some fake distress with some uh, black marker just on those high spots. In which case I did have to do a sealer coat on it. I wasn't thinking about that. Uh, but I cut this transfer, and this one is from the set uh, Vintage Post, which is a Dixie Bell uh, set. And I cut it because I was going to put it along the bottom, and then I decided that I wanted it up top. So, because I had already cut this, um, it's going to look funny if I don't piece it back on. So, I'm going to piece part of what I cut off back on the bottom and that's the the good thing about transfers is you can't piece them together and um and it still looks good so once i transferred this on then uh, i took part of that piece that i cut off and just added it to it and as you can see it works just fine uh, then I decided I wanted quite a bit more on this, so I took some of the other transfer pieces and just added them uh, here and there, uh, kind of randomly all over the birdhouse. Now here I have already painted the roof and, uh, and added my fake distress to it, but at some point I decided I didn't want to leave that roof white. So... Um, so I end up painting it later. And right now I just keep adding some of these transfer pieces. And that's the good thing about these transfers is you can just kind of cut them up in pieces and add them, uh, do layering with them or uh, just add them on small projects. And once I get uh, all the transfers that I want on this. I'm also going to be doing some stamping. So I'm going to uh, stamp some of the uh, stamps from the set I See Paris. That's a redesign by Prima Set. Uh, I'm having a very difficult time finding it in. Every time I find it, it's sold out. And I know you guys have had trouble with that also. So if either of you find it, please share uh, because uh, there's a lot of people that are looking for it and unable to catch it in. You can't get this uh, on Amazon uh, or I haven't been able to find it on Amazon. And I found it on different places on Etsy and again, it just keeps being sold out. So uh, if you have that information, uh, I would really appreciate it if you would share and I know some of the viewers would as well. This is one of the stamps that I use very often. Now I painted this roof uh, in the patina paint, the Dixie Bell patina paint in the iron finish. So I end up putting three coats on this. Uh, the first two coats I let them dry and then the third coat I sprayed the green and blue patina spray on and I didn't spray much as you can see it doesn't take a whole lot uh, I was planning on just painting the blue on but I didn't want it to be too bold so I end up adding a little bit of green also and then I just let it set until I got the desired amount of patina on it I didn't want a whole lot and then once that dried, then um, I added a clear uh, finish to this. And I, I think I used a clear satin finish a couple of coats to make sure that it was okay for outside. And then um, after I had sealed it, uh, then I decided I wanted to put a perch on this one also, and this is some sort of a knob. I don't think it's a drawer pull, uh, and it doesn't have anything that I can screw it on with. Uh, but what I ended up doing was drilling a hole uh, where I needed it and putting a little dowel that fit uh, both inside the hole and inside this little knob. There is a an opening 
for a screw or something like that. So uh, I just added uh, some E6000 in that and in the hole on the birdhouse and attached it that way. But first I want to do it in that same finish. It's some sort of blue to begin with. Uh, but I, I put a couple of coats of this patina paint on it, and when the second coat was still wet, I sprayed some of that spray on it, the patina spray in green. And then uh, I attach it to the birdhouse with that dowel and some E6000. And obviously I had to clear coat that as well. And I, I forgot to mention that I did some... Um, some stamping around the bottom of this birdhouse just on the little white ledge and I just kind of used some of the lines from the same set I see Paris uh, by we redesigned with Prima and um, and again I clear coated all of that uh, when it was finished in the hang tag that I made there, all that I did was uh, layer uh, some white book page uh, that I had antiqued around the edges over the top of some scrapbook paper, and then I stamped a little um, rose on it, and that's all that I did to that hang tag. Now, the third birdhouse that I did, I'm going to do it in a shabby chic style. And uh, this may have turned out to be my favorite. I'm not sure, uh, but it was by far my least favorite to make. And the reason is because I do not like to work with um, air dry clay. And I know that sounds bad because I love to craft and I love to create, but uh, I don't feel like I'm that good at... Um, air dry clay and to me it's just a lot of work and I really just don't care for doing it but I really couldn't um, couldn't get away from the fact that I needed to add some clay molds to this and my resin molds just wouldn't work I didn't feel like and I'm not sure how you all feel about clay molds and I, I see a lot of um, youtubers that use it and don't seem to have the issues that I do um, but especially on decorative trim like this this is the trim mold by the way by uh, redesign with Prima and I love these molds but uh, either I have to if I don't put enough cornstarch in it then they stick really badly when there's a lot of detail like this and when I do put uh, a lot then it seems like when I try to uh, press my um, a credit card or um, or just anything that I used to kind of scrape that it just wants to pull it out of the mold so I just I, I avoid working with air dry clay when I have to work with uh, or when I have something this detailed and so I don't know I don't really don't know what I'm doing wrong I've, I've heard people tell me what I'm doing wrong and then and I, and I have learned that you can't when you rake something across it like this you can't stand it up because it definitely will drag it out but even laying it down it seems to want to drag it out so to me it's just a lot of work and I would just rather not but it did make a big difference on this so I'm glad that I did it um, but it's just not something that I'll do very often and this little tool that I'm using here I can't remember what it's called but my friend Paula brought it to me and it is an IOD tool so um, I think it's to uh, you can use it to um, put do stenciling on for the um, screen stencils and it works well for that but I just thought because it's somewhat pliable it would work for this and I guess it works as good as anything that I've tried but again it's just to me 
nothing is perfect when it comes to these clay molds. So I put these larger molds around the bottom of both layers of the roof, and then I'm gonna put the smaller one right next to it on the very bottom of the birdhouse. And after I get that glued on with tight bond thick and quick glue, that's what I've found works better than anything to glue it on, uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and paint it while it's still wet because uh, I do know that painting the clay molds while they're still wet will reduce your amount of cracking and it's perfectly fine to paint them when they're still wet. So the body of this I'm going to keep white uh, so uh, the, the roof I'm going to paint in uh, this color of pink that I mixed up and I used um, half tea rose and half buttercream and now I'm going to put two coats of this color on on the roof and you just you can paint that you just be careful and not put too much pressure on it because you don't want to mess up your molds while they're still very pliable but I took put two coats on it and then I put two coats of the color cotton white on the mold and I just went ahead and painted the body of the birdhouse again uh, even though it was already white to make sure that I had the same shade of white and now I'm going to do uh, some stenciling just here on the front I don't want to add too much to this because I don't want to take away from um, all the molds that are on the roof uh, so I have this little rose stamp and I'm using some distress ink uh, in a couple of shades of pink and I'm going to use just a regular makeup brush and uh, stencil just the flower part of this stencil and then once I get my flower uh, done then I'm going to um, use the uh, some green ink to do the leaves and I just kind of lightly do those leaves because I don't want them to overpower all this and that will give my stenciling a couple of different actually a few different shades and uh, add to the interest in the front I thought about doing some stamping but in adding stamping I feel like it ends up being looking a little more French country and I'm trying to keep this one just shabby chic I also thought about doing some decoupage on it but in the end I just wanted this simple little spray of roses over the the uh, entrance but I do want to add a perch to this one also so again I just drilled uh, a hole for the perch and I'm going to add both of these little knobs. So the little glass knob um, is going to be uh, the main knob. And then this little wooden knob is going to fit right on the end of that. And I'm painting it in uh, just gold gilding wax. And this is a Dixie Bell product. Uh, but I'm just painting this on here. And then... Uh, I will attach the two of them together with some glue and a dowel rod and um, and then fit that dowel rod into the hole in the birdhouse with some glue there just like I did the last birdhouse and layering this gold on top of that clear knob I think was a good choice it it gave it a really shabby chic look and I just really like the look of this little birdhouse. Again, I think it's my favorite, but definitely wasn't my favorite to make. And I also made a little hang tag to go with it by stenciling some of that same stencil on uh, some cardstock. And I also decided to add some of that gold gilding just around this little entrance and also around the top and the handle. Uh, to bring that gold somewhere else on the birdhouse. I didn't want to add much, but I, I didn't want that gold piece to be the only gold. 
Wanted to remind you guys, if you want to do a Christmas hang tag uh, for me to decorate uh, one of my Christmas trees in the shop with, uh, I will attach uh, my address in the description. And I'll also feature your uh, hang tag in my, in my video. Now, when you send those in, uh, please let me know if you want your full name mentioned or not. Uh, some people are funny about having their name mentioned, uh, but if you would like it to be mentioned, then please let me know. Otherwise, I'll just use your first name. And here is the hang tag that I made for this one. I just added a little bit of scripture and did uh, some of the same stenciling on on the hang tag and then just added some scrunched lace on the bottom. I meant to get that one uh, on camera and um, turns out the camera wasn't on. But there are the three different styles, shabby chic, farmhouse, and French country. And in my next video, I will do a primitive video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.